Hi everybody, it's Lydia of Magna. How are you doing? As you can see, the title of this video is called and I'm like really trying to hold together. Yes, as you can see, the title of this video is called A Woman's Fight. The reason I have called this woman a woman's fight, this is Breast Cancer Month. And we have a lot of women out there uh, they are fighter. They are fighting every day to stay alive. There's a woman right now who might be watching this video. There may be a husband, a father, a uncle, a brother, a grandfather, a great great grandfather, a auntie or a sister watching this video. And you may have someone in your family who just got the news that they have breast cancer or they have cancer. And I want to say to you, my heart goes out to you. I take this very seriously. And I want to encourage those out there who are fighting any type of cancer. You are not alone. God is with you. It may not seem like it at this moment. This might seem like your darkest hour. You might say, why would a loving God allow such a cruel thing to happen to you? Why are you going through this? I don't have the answer. But I would say to you, God does love you. And you may say, well, if he loves me, why is he... Why is he allowing me to go through this? I don't understand. I want you to know you are a fighter. You are a strong woman. And if you're watching this and you say, I'm not a woman and I'm not fighting breast cancer, but I'm a man or I have a son or I have a daughter or I have a nephew. I will have a family member that's fighting cancer. I want to say, my heart goes out to you. I'm pr my family, we are praying for you. You are not alone. I want to say to the families out there, of family members who have cancer, or just got that news today, or yesterday, or last month. Please, be there for them. Sometimes you may say, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Sometimes, it's not what we say. It's not what we really do. Sometimes it's just being still. Being there for them. Being there for them. It might be give them a ride to the doctor's appointment. Just go to the doctor's appointment with them. Hold them their hand. Let them know that you are there for them. I've seen videos when young girls, young boys are going to pa going to cancer treatments or whatever. And it's like, if I remember one of them, know you're not alone. And they shave their hair. They shave it. This is a very sensitive topic for me. Today I had to go get my breast exam. And of course I will get my results real soon. And I will share with, share with my family. I had a, my, I have two brothers. I have a stepbrother. Two stepbrothers. And one of them. He had cancer. When he had cancer and I found out about it, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. He didn't even know that I knew he had the cancer. It was the hush hush thing. No one in the family told me about it. No one told me that he had cancer. I prayed, I cried, I fast. And I had a friend of mine, I called my cousin, 
And what she told me, it broke me in so many places. It broke me. It just, I went to work and it was like, I couldn't taste my food. And this is way for COVID, of course. It just felt like life had stood still. I prayed and cried. I can't tell you how many times I prayed and cried and cried. And I just begged God, please don't let him, don't let him die. Don't, don't take him from me. I can't handle it. This is my big brother who has been there for me so many times. I, I can't handle this. Well, my brother, his name, was, his name was Alex. He beat the cancer. And I finally beat the cancer. And I was so excited. I was so excited. I was thanking God. I was jumping up and down. I was like, God answered my prayer. And I was like, I was so excited. I was like, God answered my prayer. He, had, he heard my cry and he heard my supplication. I was just so happy. My months went by and I did hear from him. I didn't mention to him that I heard he had to cancel and everything. And I was in the process of moving, so I moved to a new place, a new location. And I was still, I was in contact with him, or he was in contact with me. We were like a close knit family. Things had changed since my two step brothers had different lives, so we were a, a close family. And I got a call from my ex sister in law. And she said, Yvette. And I said, yeah. She said, Alex, the, Alex got cancer again. And when I heard it, I was just like, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And I'm going, when do we get cancer again? She said, yes, stage four. And it's really not good. And he wants you to come see him. I was a single mother of time with three young boys. You know, I was just going through a lot. And it was the grace of God, my pastors helped me to, for me and my older son, to take a Greyhound, then an Amtrak train, my nephew met me there and I got to see my brother and when I saw him it was like I couldn't recognize him because I never experienced I have family member that had a cancer before I never knew what it was like what what to expect and here I am I'm not I'm not that tall I'm not you know I um went through Seeing him that way was hard. And times I would cry and he would tell me, he called me my middle name, Wendy. He said, Wendy, don't. I can't handle this. And I said, okay. And I said, what can I do for you? And he would just tell me, just be there for me. And he had talked his care and all that. And it was time that he would take his medication. And it seemed by the time he would take his medication, the pain was so, under, so I can't describe the pain because I was on his body. But it was just so, it was, he was, in, he was enduring a lot of pain, a lot, a lot of pain. And, um, bear with me with making this video. I wasn't planning on making this video, but I want to share this because someone out there is going through this. And I want you to know, I may not, I, I understand it from my brother's point of view, being there with him for three days, you know, helping him get out of bed was hard. It was really hard. Get him in a wheelchair. And I remember one time he said to me, I want to go outside. It's okay. And then when I was home, it was me and him. 
And I'm, and I'm not that tall, and I don't think I'm that strong. But I got on a bed, got on the wheelchair, and he said, you're not strong, Wendy. I mean, Wendy. He said, you, 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 you can hurt yourself. I said, I don't care. I said, I got you. I got you. And I called on Jesus. I said, Jesus, I need you. I need you. Well, I tell you, must have been a strong angel in that room because I picked him up, put him in that wheelchair, wheeled him to the front door. So he could just, he just wanted the sun in his, in his face. He just wanted to feel the sun. And we just sat there. And he said, we'll be back in, back in the house. And I did, which is like at the front of his apartment. And I really haven't shared this story with anyone before. This is my first time sharing this. And I remember just spending time with him. It's not an easy video to make, but I want to share this because this is what camp was like. When I was getting ready to leave, my second day, my third day of being there, because I, I could only stay like three days because I had my young kids and they went to school and I felt my to watch them. I had so much time to stay with him, spend with him. I let him tell Lord and we said the prayer together. And it was cute because he looked at me and he said, Wendy, is this going to be a long prayer? I said, no, it's this again. And when I remember when I was going to leave, he looked at me and he said, Could you be back? And I looked at him. But I knew in my heart that he wasn't going to be around too much longer. And he started to cry. And my sister said, Don't, 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 don't do that to her. And he called me Benita, Benita. And he said another word in Spanish. And I was going, on, my brother doesn't speak Spanish. You know, our family is Creole and French, you know. What, what I want to say in this video, if it touches one person's life, then I know that it touched one life and that's what really matters. If you have a loved one that's going through this right now, you are not alone. They are not alone. Love them, cherish them, believe them, fight for them, pray for them, have patience, give them love. If you have a co-worker that has a family member that has been diagnosed with cancer and you see them sitting there and they're eating lunch and you see a different change in them and you ask them what's wrong and they say, my husband my wife, my child, my family member of cancer. We always say, oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that. And we leave it that way. Pontius, when you see him next time, ask him, how are you doing? How are you doing? Encourage them. If you can, you know what, I'm gonna go here. If I know I can go to Starbucks and have that cup of coffee Caramel macchiato was my favorite. It's like probably five, six bucks. If I go to work five days in a row and I have that coffee and it balance up to, like, say, with taxes, it's like six dollars, seven dollars. This, this, round up seven dollars. Seven times five is 35. If you could sacrifice that for five days, and give them $35, just $35, just $35. Can you do that? Can you make a little basket with maybe some tea? Find out what, what they like, it. you know, maybe they like tea. Put some fruit in it for them. A card that says, I believe in you, you're a fighter, you're a warrior, you're gonna beat this. You may say, well, you had this cancer. 
So, where is your faith? And I'm talking about, I'm not taking this lightly. Because my brother had cancer and he went to remission. He beat it. But they came back. And when it came back, it came back with a vengeance. During this time in the process, if it's not your family member and it's a friend or a colleague from work, please be careful what you say. Watch your words. Walk in love. Sacrifice just that seven dollars of coffee for five days and bless them. If all you could do is give them twenty dollars, say this is for your family. It's not much. And if you could do that for a whole say so you could pay twice a week and you can give them forty dollars to do it. You might say, Well, you've got to have no in my family, thank God, that have cancer. Can you take $20, $20, and donate to the Cancer Foundation for children, for women who are fighting with breast cancer, for men who have prostate cancer? Can you, can you take that $5? Say you go to Starbucks and you spend $15, 15 I'm going to get my phone out right now because I'm serious. If you can go to Starbucks like I do and say you spend $15, okay, one day by Starbucks. Say you're going three times a day in Starbucks and you got five days that you go to work. Five days you're working. Okay, 15 times five, that's $75. $75. Can you take $75 and help someone who has cancer? Can you take $75 and donate to the breast cancer, to the Sherwin Hospital Foundation and say, I want to touch one life. If that $75 can touch one life, two lives, three lives, can you do it this month? I urge you, I encourage you, do it. Touch a life. If no one in your family has cancer, can you please take $75? If it's just $5, if it's, come on people, if we do $20, $20 and donate, <clears throat> To the cancer cancer foundation, do it. You may say, "Well, I don't know the phone number. I will get that for you." Give them a call. Come on, family. We got people hurting. We got families hurting. We got families going to hospitals, traveling back and forward, and we know the gas price is not going lower. It's getting higher. Some places gas is seven dollars a gallon. Some places it's six ninety nine. Might as well seven dollars a gallon. Some places it's five dollars and ninety nine cents a gallon. You see people on the street and have signs and saying, "My child is dying of cancer," and we might question that and say, "Well, maybe it's true. Maybe it's a scam." Yes, we have to use wisdom. If you can donate to the hospital, majority of the hospitals have shown. I think it's in St. Joseph Hospital. They don't charge their family anything that I know of for stay. Let this month, breast cancer, breast cancer month, let's make an impact. I'm, a, I'm asking you, make an impact in someone's life today. If you know someone on your job who has a family member that have cancer, Take $25 out of your check, $35 out of your check, $40 out of your check, $50 out of your check. Make them a basket or just say, you know what, this is for your family member. You might say, they might spend on themselves. I don't want to take that chance. Can you donate to the Cancer Foundation? That's what we need to do.
Come on, family. My name is Yvette Magno. I pray this video blesses you. And if you are a person who's fighting cancer, my heart goes out. I'm praying for you. May your husband will continue to pray for you. If you have any comments, leave them below. If this video touched you in any way, let us know. Press the subscribe button. Press the comments. We'd like to hear from you. And um, this is a very delicate topic. But family, let's make an impact. We can do it. Love the Manger family.